What up, YouTube? Here with a post fight review video for last week's Tim Tazu Terrell Gausha fight. You already know the results to this fight. Uh, Tim Tazu was able to pick up a unanimous decision win, a uh, well earned win that was, in a dominating one sided performance. He pretty much put on the clinic. Um, I personally had the fight score 118 to 109. It would have been 119 to 109, but in the first round, I had to score a 10 8 round due to the knockdown uh, scored by Gausha. He caught Tazu coming in with a beautiful counter right hand, uh, which landed uh, flush and it was perfectly timed. But Tazu didn't seem to be phased by the knockdown at all. Mind you, this wasn't his first time. Uh, again, dropped. Uh, he bounced right back up off the canvas and, you know, went to work and closed out the first round very well. If it weren't for the knockdown, it, you know, the first round, more times it'd be like, you know, a fill-out round for uh, for fighters, especially fighting in the, in the, in the professional level. Um, but, you know, from what I saw in the first round, I thought the momentum was swinging towards Tazu's favor a little bit, but, you know, the knockdown you know, came into effect, so 10-8 round, the first round, uh, I had a score for Gausha, but other than that, the rest of the fight, Tazu dominated, it was all Tazu, um, Tazu uh, won the fight via, you know, landing the more better effective punches, his pressure was the key component to his uh, win in this fight, um, he was able to control where the fight was being fought at, uh, his volume was able to back up Gausha. Anytime Gausha was throwing anything, Tazu would throw something heavier and, and, and that would back Gausha up to the ropes, which is where Tazu would want Gausha. And that's where majority of the fight was being fought at with, Taz, uh, with Tazu having Gausha pressured back towards the ropes and him uh, going at it with flurries of punches. His best punches, in my opinion, uh, uh, in this fight. Tazu's best punches were the uppercut and the overhand uh, right hand, especially while he had Gaucho's back against the ropes and corner. And, um, yeah, Tazu, you know, um, um, he was throwing in different angles as well. I was kind of impressed by that. Um, while, while, you know, uh, Gaucho would have his guard up high while he was against the ropes, uh, you know, that, that high guard of his was, you know, protecting uh, him from Tazu's uh, onslaught and you know that would call for Tazu to throw in you know different angles I thought you know that adjustment was impressive on Tazu's part and um, the Showtime commentating team was talking about how Tazu could utilize a jab to you know uh, start up his offense and to get inside of uh, Gausha uh, pause. Uh, anyways, that was immature, but y'all, y'all, y'all get the gist of what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, um, you know, cause that's been a, a question, uh, towards, uh, Tazu's game while he's on his come up journey, um, that he could utilize his jab more, but he didn't need that fight at all because, you know, uh, whatever he was uh, doing in this fight, all the other, you know, effective things that he was doing throughout this fight was working like a charm for him, uh, uh, in this fight. Now, the judges had it scored a lot more closer than I thought they should have had it scored, but hey, that's what they saw. Um, you know, uh, but hey, the right man won the fight, Tazu won the fight, uh, in his uh, U.S. debut, and yeah, um, um, you know, he, he's only going uh, up from here. He's got that, that Tazu name to carry on. And that's that's a, a big name in the sport of boxing. Um, he's one of the very few Australian fighters who's fighting at a top tier level. And uh, 154 pounds in the sport of boxing right now isn't the most lively division in the sport. The middleweights are like man, It's not like you know you you have some some key names like the super middleweights. You have of course the 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 kingpin. Of the sport of boxing right now, Canelo Alvarez, the cash cow, the top name of the sport. He fights at super middleweight. His next fight is going to be at light heavyweight. Um, so with that being said, but he still fights around, you know, the middleweights. But other than that, you got the Charlo twins who ain't really fighting anybody, especially the one at middleweight. And I say that with all due respect. 
um, Tomba um, Jamal Charlo. He holds one belt at 160 pounds, and that's been a name uh, that's been in the mix with Tim Tazu. But Tim Tazu fights at uh, 154, not at 160, and that's where Jermel Charlo, who holds majority of the titles at 154, uh, fights at, and that's, you know, who Tazu, uh, or ba basically anybody who's fighting at a top level at the super welterweight division is going to want to target is Jermel Charlo, who holds majority of the titles at junior middleweight. And he's got a fight coming up uh, in, in a few months in a rematch against Brian Castaño. That's going to uh, crown who's going to be the undisputed 154-pound champion. And um, with that being said, you know, any unification title fight in the sport of boxing with so many titles uh, uh, in, in, the, in the sport right now is always a good thing. But an undisputed uh, title fight... You know, it's happening more often now, which is a great thing. You know, that's always good. So I'm looking forward to that rematch. Their first fight was uh, very uh, intriguing and entertaining. I'm looking forward to the rematch between Castanio and uh, Charlo. But that's who Tazu is targeting after. Um, and after after a performance like this, um, you know, he like I said, he dominated to pick up the win in, in, in this fight against Gausha. But he's not on the level of uh, Jermel Charlo, you know, uh, ever since Charlo came back from his only defeat against Tony Harrison, he, he ain't, he ain't lose yet, even though, you know, I thought he should have lost that fight against Castanio, but that's a whole nother topic, um, but I don't think, I don't think he's even ready for a Arislandi Lara, um, I don't think he's, uh, ready for, Charlo or Castano, I still think he needs a few more fights under his belt before he challenges for any of the four major titles at 154. Um, and then you also have um, another two undefeated prospects who fights at 154. They have a fight coming up this week. Um, um, Lubin and Fondora, they got a fight coming up this week, this Saturday. On Showtime, two undefeated fighters, prospects, who fights at 154. Looking forward to that fight. Maybe he could fight the winner of that fight. You know, I, I don't know if Tim Tazu is going to go back to Australia. I'm sure he's going to want to, you know, have fights often uh, there in Australia to put on in front of his, you know, uh, home peoples over there. Um, but like I said, other than, you know, his uh, local fights... I say, you know, if, since he's made his U.S. debut, um, he, he's going to only fight, you know, top competition from here on, especially if he's going to fight in America. Um, like I said, Lubin and Fandora, the winner of that fight, you know, can, you know, have, have a fight against Tim Tazu in their next fight. I think that fight's going to be on uh, both fighters, you know, fight on Showtime. So with that being said, you know, there shouldn't be any promotional issues to have that fight made. If not, you know, you still have guys like Arislani Lara. Um, I don't know. I don't know if uh, Austin Trout is still around, but you know, you know those recognizable names. It's not too many at 154. Uh, Janelle Hurd, um, um, Tony Harrison. These guys are not as good as they once were before. You know, Lara still, you know, is is a top level fighter at both 160 and at 154. So that would be a dangerous fight. I don't think he's, re I don't think Tim Tazu is ready for Lara, but, you know, Hurd, Harrison, I think that name, you know, is a, a more of a safer fight for Tazu to take on to have, you know, names like that on his resume, especially if he's going to win those fights. I think those two fights, you know, Harrison or, or, or Hurd, I think those two fights are a, a good, you know, fight for him. Um, and then, you know, he could get some more wins if he fights locally out there in Australia. But what I really want to see before he challenges for any of the major titles at 154 is him fighting the winner of Fondora and Lubin. Um, or if not, whoever, you know, uh, uh, ends up losing in that fight between Lubin and Fondora, he could, he could fight the loser as well. It don't matter, but it would be more of a high-stake fight. If he were to fight 
another undefeated fighter who's a prospect on the come up in the same division. Anyways, that does it for this uh, post fight review video. Y'all let me know what y'all thoughts are in the comments. How y'all think uh, Tim Tazoo performed in his uh, U.S. debut. What y'all see in his future. If y'all got a video on y'all channels uh, covering the same thing, I'll be glad to check it out. Um, subscribe, like, comment, share, all that good stuff. Anyways, y'all, y'all stay healthy and safe. I'm out. Peace.